four, three. Hey, this is Facebook for the Blind for Friday, August 28th, 2020. And just to give you a few news headlines to get your place in time since the pandemic has distorted all temporal reality. Uh, during this pandemic, when uh, about a thousand Americans a day are dying, we just uh, struck a milestone of 181,000 confirmed COVID deaths. Uh, in the South Lawn of the White House, chairs were just inches apart. Protective masks were not required. COVID-19 tests were not administered to everyone. And the president defied his own administration's coronavirus guidelines to speak for more than an hour about what a rosy picture America is today. Also, Kenosha, Wisconsin is in the news. Jacob Blake was shot in the back seven times by Kenosha police. This coincides with a march on Washington, D.C. right now. And also in Kenosha, Kyle Rittenhouse, the alleged shooter charged with murder of firing at protesters, had his hearing in Waukegan, Illinois, where the judge delayed his extradition to Wisconsin to give him time to hire a legal team. And you should see the legal teams that have already signed on. Uh, weakened but dangerous Laura, the Category 4 hurricane, uh, entered the United States between the Louisiana and Texas border with uh, one of the strongest hurricanes ever to strike the U.S. 150 mile per hour winds. It's destroyed buildings, toppled trees, killed at least six people the last time I checked, and it is continuing as a tropical depression into the United States. So there's potentially more tornadoes and awful weather to come. So that's where we're at in time. And uh, I'm Eric. I'm Tyler. I'm Michael. I'm George. And I think we're kicking off with Tyler. What's uh, new in the world of your online social media? Uh, well, my choice is always Reddit. Uh, I just want to share some things here with you. First, we got a little video here. Uh, it says, your chances of getting murdered by a mouse are low, but never zero. <laughs> And you're looking at like a, a mini fridge and some junk. There's a little mouse that oh runs God. by it. It's literally holding onto a knife. <laughs> oh. And then it runs back. Oh, that's man. Cool. Have you seen that video of the crab with a knife? Mm -hmm. I yeah. think I have. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh, before. man. Yeah, you got to watch out for animals with knives. <laughs> Dude, armed animals are the best. <laughs> so here's a uh, tweet on uh, the subreddit called White People Twitter. And the tweet says, I thought I liked seeing movies, but turns out I like eating candy in a dark room where it's illegal to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a subreddit <laughs> called Cursed Comments. There's a, a post that says, uh, it shows a bunch of cigarette butts with like plants coming out of them. Wow. And it says biodegradable cigarette filters with flower seeds. And then somebody commented, help nature in two ways by planting trees and killing yourself <laughs> love it I can two and one if i got the two and one that's great All right and here's another uh tweet that was on reddit it says shit i have a therapy meeting in 20 minutes and i haven't practiced my lines <laughs> <laughs> that's good uh this is a little more serious this is a uh picture of a tornado aftermath oh where it shows a giant piece of wood i don't know how long maybe we'll say probably at least six feet long and it's literally oh just piercing through uh probably about four inches of cement that's insane that just shows that's you how destructive like 150 mile per hour winds can be yeah wow. I know that's serious, but that just reminds me of the King of the Hill where Dale is just like, an F5 will send an egg through a brick wall. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> the soft will be blasted through the hard. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. And uh, I guess ending on a more serious note, this is on the subreddit called uh, Bad Cop No Donut. Mm. The, oh, I love title, that subreddit. Uh, I do too. The title says, imagine being so scared you can't approach someone without your gun in hand. And here we have a, uh, a picture of a white police officer pulling over a younger black man in a newer looking vehicle. And he's got his hand uh, like on his gun while the black man uh, gets his papers ready. 
and uh, it's kind of has like a a blurb right above it. it says this brother is getting his license registration and insurance papers ready to hand to the cop in broad daylight and look what the cop already has his hand on out the holster if you are this scared find a new job we are all this close to being a hashtag mm. Mm. i fully agree with that it's you know, yeah. it, there's implied danger in the job, and what you're supposed to do is uphold the law as a representative of, you know, in theory, as a representative of, you know, maintaining the peace. It's to protect and serve, and I, I haven't seen, I that's wild that how long it's been since I even fucking heard that phrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I uh, I was in the military for eight years, and our escalation of force was so like our, our rules of engagement were so explicit that I had it being afraid was not justification for shooting someone. Are you kidding me? I woke up afraid. Like I was in a war zone, like being scared is not justification for killing someone. What I had to do was I had to actually like assess how they have attacked me. And when, once they have attacked me, like then I can, retaliate but there was never this like just walk rolling up on people ready to shoot them because they scare me with the way that they nope. look or talk it's stupid no and you know why because that probably would have happened even with the rules in place but there's consequences you get course martial for that shit oh yeah that like and fast. That's the thing. i don't care how much your your command loves you like, it's not that, you know, the military is inherently more, you know, the people there are more moral than police. It's nothing like that. It's that no. there are actual consequences for the fucking actions. The policies, man. That's what drives all this stuff. Like, not is, to say that I'm fully in support of the, the military and what they do either, but, I mean, at least they can keep their fucking house in order. Me neither. Right? <laughs> like, but but they, they've been at it a very, very long time. And yeah, one, of engagement, and, and they mostly stick to them. Yeah, Geneva. So, I mean, I think that this is a good point, right? Is that it's not, it's not governed by the United States Army. It's like the United States Army in this regard is governed by Geneva. And that makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. I, I have paraphrased you several times, Michael, whenever people come out with the very, you know, benefit of the doubt for the police. And I'm like, you know, it's interesting. My veteran friends often comment that due to their training, they never have a question of when use of force is authorized against unarmed civilians. <laughs> no question. It never comes up. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I would like at least that level of training. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> right. It, yeah, well, it, it is too much to ask, it, given what their aims are with law enforcement. So, if their if their aims were the same as mine, then of course it wouldn't be too much to ask. But they're not looking for what we're looking for. They're looking for something else entirely. And uh, that's you know that that whitest kids you know sketch where it's like, oh, oh yeah, and uh, keep the poor like yeah to protect, serve, and to control the poor. And to control the poor. That's it. <laughs> that was one of. Yeah, join the police force, and they're just like the the whole sketch, the just air, firing the just... <laughs> Whatever they're doing, they're shooting <laughs> missiles in the air. All right, uh, my up next. Yes. All right, I'm Michael. I am a graduate of Vanderbilt Divinity School. I'm an interfaith chaplain, and uh, always here to talk about religion. Specifically, I'm always here to talk about heresy. So, um, you know, I I, I actually think. I think that, that there's a lot of ways that we can look at like religion. One thing that I want to be really careful about is, you know, I am a person who, uh, I, my, my religion is technically Christian anarchy, but, uh, you know, that does, that's not to say that I can't, I can't just sit here and be like, Oh, I, you know, my religion isn't complicit with all of the horrible, awful things that have happened in the world when it, when it is right. Christianity has a long bloody history. So, uh, I, you know, what I'm about to say next, I understand this is like, this is kind of like an intra-family fight. So uh, I'm actually going to start with a meme that I, uh, that came up on my timeline from, I, I guess I posted it like last year or a couple of years ago. Yeah, last year. Um, and this is a picture of St. Polycarp of Smyrna. And uh, it says, 
If you think I will swear by Caesar, you do not know me. Hear me clearly. I am a Christian. Uh, this is the reason that I want to point this out is because what is being stated here, like what St. Polycarp is showing, is this dichotomy. One cannot swear by Caesar, or in another, another way to say that would be to swear allegiance to the president, or to pledge allegiance to the flag, right? To be patriot, to be a nationalist. One cannot do that and be Christian. Um, that's just, those two things are incompatible. Mm. Now, I said that to say this, what happened at the Republican National Committee convention with Vice President Biden is uh, Vice President something, Pence. I'm sorry, yes, Vice President Pence, not Biden. Biden's got his own problems, but but he is he is remarkably better than this. Uh, so this is a picture of a tweet, actually, and, and this floated around Facebook. I just shared it recently. And uh, he's, it says, it's from Vernon Pierre at Pastor VP is the originator of this. He says, please don't ever do that again, Mr. Vice President. And what he did was he put uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, right next to... Uh, section of Vice President Pence's speech from mm. August 26, 2020. And then in red strike through, he, he showed where Pence simply added text to scripture. He inserted these texts into scripture. And the, what he inserted into these scriptures is old glory and all she represents. So that it says, so then let's run the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on. And then instead of fix our eyes on, uh, Oh, I forget. But on Jesus, face pioneer and perfecter, it says, fix our eyes on old glory and all she represents. Let us fix our eyes on and then insert it again, this land of heroes and let their courage inspire. He added later, and our freedom and never forget that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And then he inserts again, that means freedom always wins. Mm. These are, this, is, this is not like extra canonical ideas. These are simply nationalistic ideas that are being put forth by the vice president of the United States presented not just in the biblical speech, which a lot of presidents like to do, right? They kind of talk in ways that sound like scripture. He actually took scripture and inserted nationalism directly into it. Uh, this is not new. This is a heresy that has been around for a long time. The Herodians are one of Jesus's like major opponents in the public sphere this is like, this is something, this is a long fight. This fight belongs to Christianity. It's one that we've always had. And uh, Constantine, huge win for the, for the side of Caesar, right? For the, for the religion of dominant power. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but watching this unfold, watching this vice president who is so, so heavily supported by evangelical Christians who make up the base of the right-wing party now, uh, watching them just like get down on one knee for this guy. It is killing me inside. So I've been in all these fights. One of the things I wrote was uh, they, they, they wrote a, a list of like these evangelical leaders came out who were all at Trump's speech at the White House, which was actually way against the law, not for them to be there, but for him to make that speech at the White House. Yeah. And all their names were listed. And I, I uh, retweeted it. On, on Twitter, obviously. And I said, not listed, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> the, the, the story from the Old Testament of the three Israelites who would not bend the knee to the graven image of the national leader, right? This is, uh, it's, it's playing out in front of us again. It's happened before. Uh, it's it's going to happen again. But this is, this is something that at the crux of the religion of Christianity, it cannot, it simply cannot be nationalistic it's oxymoron christian nationalism is an oxymoron so the I, the last thing that i want to tag on here is all over facebook is this kid who i don't even want to say his name who's 17 year old kid who goes up to kenosha wisconsin and just starts hunting protesters whose mother his drives him whose mother yeah. drives right. him in his gun his mother drove him from illinois where we're where we're at right now into wisconsin across state lines with this, with this semi-automatic weapon, and he ends up shooting three people, killing two of them. 
Now, that's upsetting all by itself. But Tucker mm-hmm. Carlson of Fox News mm-hmm. comes out and says, like, who, like, are we really mad at this kid for standing up for law and order when nobody else would? Like, making a hero of this 17 year old murderer. He was part of a whole militia that was there, and the cops were thanking them. And yes, so shaking just, hands, high five, and upholding just what a load of shit. They gave him water. The cops were like giving, handing out water. There, these, and by the way, militias, they're gangs, George. Like yeah. these are just gangs. Like they're they're gangs. Like just because it's all all white people, we always call them militias. Yeah, you What's can't the just call them gang thugs because you know that's what that's what they fucking are. That's what they are. Arms and so. Again, oh, one of the most militia. We're constitutionalists, and we're fucking not. No, you're a fucking gang, dude. right? You're a gang. The thing that the thing that's been so upsetting is watching not just I. I don't just want to say like evangelical Christians on my feed. These are evangelical pastors, pastors of churches, who are saying that that young man was doing something righteous, yeah, by defending property. The the thing that 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 i'm gonna stop that i'll stop ranting on here but the thing that that i can't get away from is that christianity spread across the like from region to region primarily through martyrdom primarily because christians unlike everybody else at the time christians were willing to die for what they believed in Mm. and whenever christianity moves from being willing to die for what you believe in to being willing to kill for what you believe in that's officially when it's jumped the shark like that 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 is automatically when you can no longer say that you're being like Christ. If now if Christ had been like I'm the son of God and then gone on a killing spree, then fine. But that's not that's not the story, is it? Christ says I'm the son of God and then he gets executed by the state. So uh the the whole thing here, the the whole idea that supporting or ho- upholding murderers like this in the name of Christ can even exist is an absolute scourge it is an absolute abomination to to the legacy of the story of jesus i that's i i will say that's an issue that i've noticed with pretty much every religion that i've looked into in the actual text and philosophy of it um you know i you you there's always like a a great you know usually very solid and 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 peaceful message underlying most religion and then, you know, but the, the nature of the popularity of it and the power that it could, uh, uh, that's, that's usually where it gets sort of twisted is that people will always just go after, you know, abusing religion for, for money and power. And, uh, and that's where, yeah, <laughs> that's why put- all the, that's why all the televangelists, all the evangelists with the, uh, with the prosperity gospel, obviously those people are on the side of the fascists who are trying to use it to up their own power because that's that they understand that they're speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. Money is power and power is money. And people don't talk about that enough. I think it's very interesting. You guys are are taking it more into the religious tact, but I mean, primarily what I saw today was the, I mean, this cartoon, this was the thing that was going around the most, you know, was that, you know what what police consider threatening and non-threatening the racism yeah. at the heart of it all yeah. man mm-hmm. you know and i and i commented many times just just you know i'm sorry but a person's back you know i watched a lot of kung fu theater and they have like the touch of death and all kinds of crazy moves never in my life have i seen somebody in a kung fu movie kill somebody else with their back no like, and that is so yellow to shoot to shoot somebody in the back. Yep. It is. You'd think that'd be in the use of force training. A good way to lose your job if you're a soldier. It's they just such a them. it's such a universally known thing that that's just it's, it's just such a scumbag move to shoot somebody in the back and they did it seven times and half the country is defending them. It's just like before that Sorry, I had a phone call there. It was restricted, <laughs> so I didn't trust it. But you could have you could have asked anybody anybody around anywhere, just like, yo, do you think somebody should get shot in the back ever? Do you think it's ever acceptable? <laughs> no. mm-hmm. 
No. <laughs> Dude, watch a Western. Like any Western. <laughs> the second a sheriff shoots somebody in the back is the second that, that sh- you find that you realize that sheriff is the villain of the movie and a cowboy's coming in. Like that is that is always like it is a universally wrong thing to do. Yeah. No. This reminded me of that Bill Hicks bit on Jack Palance and Shane. You remember that? <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh come on, Sheriff, you wouldn't shoot an unarmed man, would you? And he throws the gun at his feet and he goes, pick up the gun. <laughs> you don't know this bit? Oh, no. oh yeah, no, that's a that's a old Bill Hicks joke. Classic. That's what. It, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they'll. They'll. I mean, listen. You. The the way we always understood it growing up was like, you're never unarmed if you get shot by the cops because they arm you afterward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that was an interesting Wait. tweet, tweet the winner. Well, it was, it was on Twitter and it was on Facebook today was, you know, people saying I keep a knife in my car or I keep a knife yeah. in my pocket. And it's like, and that's not a good reason to be shot. No. <laughs> right. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. It was like retweet if you have a knife in your car. Yeah. And they were just like a million yeah. retweets because we, we all do, of course. We all do. And the thing that killed me was like twice as many of the respondents were women. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, and I, George, and, what you got, man? Wait, I do want to follow. My my one lesson from that was from Kenosha, I think. I shouldn't keep a knife in my car. I should keep a long gun. You know, it's safer. <laughs> Unfortunately, the reality is all three of us are, are white, and so it wouldn't matter if we had a nuclear warhead in our car. We wouldn't be in as much danger as that father Well, not me. You two are hippie freaks. Uh-huh. You're getting shot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up and mess up my mohawk. I, no, it's just curly hair on top. <laughs> Give me just a moment. I keep a clip-on tie in the glove box for just such occasions. <laughs> Very smart. I I need to get one of those fraternal order of police stickers. Oh, on the back of my car. Good I knew go. my car was missing something. That's what I need. <laughs> you know, I had a scooter one time, and I found this wonderful uh, bumper sticker, and it was really tiny, um, but it just had "I heart cops" that fit right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I got I I had a lot of conversations with cops about that. They liked it. There's a uh, there's one. It's a uh... It's fascist logic. Destroying property to stop murder is wrong, but murdering to protect property is right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I there's a lot of uh, just so many people that are going for that angle that, oh, well, you know, oh, they're, they're looting. They're, the windows are getting smashed. We got to kill them. It's just, it's... Oh, before... Un- I- we, frustrating here in champagne we've got people protesting graffiti and chalk chalk oh yeah oh people mad about that big mad yeah my i have friends in tennessee who are looking at felony charges of vandalism for writing in chalk on the sidewalk good lord you know i i remember as children we used to like vacation summer times you know up at this lake in uh, michigan and all the kids, we got out our chalk and we went to town on the motel sidewalk. And then the owner came out and just yelled at all the kids, like grumpy people do at kids, you probably remember. And then uh, the, my mother and, and the other kid's mother, they were very concerned. And I don't know where she came up with. She had little plastic tubs and, and extra toothbrushes. And I was like, it's chalk. And I took a glass of water and just went sploosh. And you should have seen this woman that was so sorry that we hadn't abided by the rules going, are you kidding? Seriously? A right. cup of water. Like no brushing at all. Just water. Yeah, rain will take care of it. Anything. <laughs> Squirt gun. <laughs> she was aghast when she figured out like how overblown this woman <laughs> was. Oh, but the mental gymnastics are just always like, sorry, I'm looking for something, but you can still hear me, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but the mental gymnastics are just like, they'll, I, I literally, I said that once, I was just like, it's chalk, it just washes off, and somebody's just like, well, if you spray it with hairspray, then uh, it's, it becomes permanent, and I'm just like, if that's true, that's awesome, and if I feel Not like true. if it was, people would do it way, way more often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude. The, the, what, what, like the, what the meme you shared, though, or the tweet you shared, like that, 
that is like at the heart of this. I have seen, I've been in, I was in this argument today online uh, with more Christians who are defending people's right to kill. They were specifically defending this kid for killing people. He was, they said like he was defending property. He was defending these small businesses. He was defending wealth really. Right. Yeah. You know, the but question the I kept posing that you can kill in order to, in order to protect property is oh. bonkers. Well, not just that, but I, I just posted too. I was like, does Wisconsin have stand somebody else's ground laws? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's He's funny when you them. say what? Protecting the target. I said he was protecting the target. He was protecting the CBS. Got to protect the target. <laughs> <laughs> There would be no Target stores if there weren't these gang members standing outside of them with their AR-15s. I am having trouble with this. Hold on. Well, when you guys are talking about graffiti or destruction of property or whatever, I mean, you know, it, you've seen this. It's tribalism. And any, any tiny, minor, symbolic infraction, you know, that's caused by your enemy tribe can be blown out of proportion. You know, and it's this crazy thing. My favorite quote is John Stewart. He says, a lot of what the right does, and maybe it is their greatest genius, is they've created a code of conduct that they police, but that they themselves don't have to in any way abide. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, how many people have you said, that's disrespectful of the president? And you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, like, I don't think you guys ever get to say that ever again. <laughs> no. Not after Obama. Well, disrespectful. I mean, we just talked about it. He just, he just violated his own health guidelines to have a illegal talk in the Rose Garden. And, yeah. and breached the Hatch Act. And, and speaking of them, they're, uh, they always love playing up the... Uh, or even if they don't directly address it, they say the exact same shit as QAnon. It's really it's frustrating to, to see that and Interestingly enough, the guy got doxxed recently. Uh, the yeah. person who made it, it's the same person who runs 8chan. Just fucking surprise, surprise. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> What's that guy's name? Uh, Jim Watkins? Yeah, this, this meme is just a uh, QAnon guy, or it's a tweet, I guess, from at M. Nate Shyamalan. Uh, and uh, it says, QAnon guy, the rich are corrupt. Me, yeah. QAnon guy, and above the law. Me, death. QAnon guy, they're satanic cultists stealing kids to drink their adre adrenal glands and gain supernatural powers, but Trump teamed up with JFK Jr.'s ghost to send them to Guantanamo Bay. Me, okay, you made it weird. <laughs> I swear, I've been on conspiracies, and I don't put the U.S. government above, like, anything, but the weird sort of conspiracies that veer into the... And what's most frightening about this to me is that the weird conspiracies that uh, QAnon flirts with, sort of the Illuminati, like the blood drinking and sacrifice and shit like that. That always ties its way back into anti-Semitism. Uh, every time. Every single time. You can, you can just set your watch by it. Now, uh, right. one, one and thing I, it's, yeah. it's just, it's fucking infuriating because it's just like, oh my God, this is the shadowy group of people that controls everything. And it's just like, yeah, they're called capitalists. Mm -hmm. I've, seen, I've seen that meme around. <laughs> No, <laughs> that was the same. They're called capitalists. It's not a big fucking secret. You know, they, they, you know, Bezos just became the first $200 billion man. Just imagine. I don't, because human brains can't really comprehend what 200 billion is. If there were 200 billion blades of grass in my yard, I would just be a green screen to you right now. Like it just the wouldn't thing, even. <laughs> the thing that gets me, I, I watched a couple minutes of that uh, Georgia. It was a Georgia politician who's a QAnon person who's definitely going to be in the House of Representatives who's posting all kinds of QAnon stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Anyway, the thing is, I listened to a little bit of what she was talking about. And, um, and I, I realized it, it was, she was talking about like, you know, that there's this cult that sacrifices to the demon Moloch, right? And Moloch is this ancient demon that, that wants you to sacrifice children, you know, to improve your wealth and prosperity. So, you know, 
sending kids into harm's way for the economy, sort of. <laughs> and like completely oblivious. <laughs> That's really interesting. Uh <laughs> Well, the other thing that gets me, now, you said that it always ties back into anti-Semitism, but it has been reminding me of the satanic panic of the 1980s. Mm. I don't know. Do you, I mean, but there was fear of I know, satanic panic, super cool heavy metal band name. Go oh, on. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised that they didn't, there wasn't one called satanic panic. That would have been a great fucking band name because then every time people were talking about it on the news, like the fans of the band would be like, oh, sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what happened was that they were they were a punk pop, but they were just too early. They were too poppy and not punk enough. <laughs> just a it is a band. <laughs> it's already a band. Satanic Panic. Fair enough. But anyway, I did a quick follow-up on it. I hadn't realized that it actually started in Canada in the 80s. It raged into the 90s. And there are a ton of people who are still in prison for this, despite the fact that from some 12,000 different investigations across you know the world uh no evidence of any satanic conspiracy was ever found and i remember at least one daycare center where you know the kids were coached into talking about secret tunnels and all this stuff and they dug it up and there's no tunnels i mean it's another you know comet pizza has no basement but there's going to be people that are going to see this video who are going to say, yeah, but they, they filled it in. Those, those guys, they filled it in with dirt. You know, like the, the, there's always some way you can rationalize it. But there's no yeah. evidence. I mean, 12,000. I mean, it was a huge thing. I remember it. There's people in prison today. Yeah. Yep. I'm searcher. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to be true. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Just put that right into YouTube, what you want to be true, and you're a researcher. Yep. <laughs> Michael, I keep, I keep yeah. thinking about what you said all the time. You just want to you just want to head off those threads with, you know, all right, just post your YouTube link. You know you want to. Just post yeah. your YouTube link. I love it because they're just like, do your research, do your research. And it's just like, no, I'm not going to go on YouTube and look up whatever you looked up. Send me the YouTube link so I know that you're a joke. Right, right. <laughs> this is uh this is just uh satanic panics logo and i thought you guys should see it nice. <laughs> all right boys well i think we wrapped the day pretty good yeah yeah seems like a good one there we go pretty decently facebook for the blind about some stuff. And meme challenged News of the All right, news. I'm, telling and interesting. I'm gonna go cook some supper, feed this family before they turn into gremlins. Love you, That's George. Probably a good idea. Yo, love you too, Michael. Love you, Eric. Take it easy, y'all. Love you, Michael. Love you, Tyler, wherever you are. Oh, he's yeah, love you, Tyler. Way off in the in the distance. They're long gone by now. All this right. has been another fabulous episode of Facebook for the Blind. Yeah. Ah, fuck yeah. Hey, take it easy, Eric. Good to see you, George. Talk to you later. Peace. Bye.